not sure when was the last time you've been on a roller coaster, but this is basically how it feels to play the new Starter Deck 13 Luffy. This is actually going to be a Starter Deck expansion that's going to be released this month on April 19th. Of course, it's already been released in December of last year overseas, and it's seen some success. Not a whole ton, but there's a few reasons for that. And I'm not saying that it's a bad deck at all. It actually has a ton of cool tools, a dedicated searcher, or a number of them, and a bunch of archetypes and support in the yellow color that I can use. The leader card reads, your face up life cards are placed at the bottom of the deck instead of being added to your hand. And basically this is just a balancing mechanic. It just says, instead of getting the cards that you can put from the trash from to your life to your hand, you do not get those and you have to use them and basically have this back and forth with your deck and as well as all of your plays. Now, there aren't very many cards in the yellow pool that really take advantage of face-up cards, but this deck does. This is because we have a bunch of two costs that come out of the starter deck. That is the three little brothers, I guess. I don't, I don't know kind of where you want to put them, but basically it's going to be Ace, Luffy, and as well as Sabo. They all have their respective five cost cards that they can play into. But before we do that, you have to understand what they do in the first place. They basically all say the same. For each character, you have an activate main where you can trash this character while it's on the field. And if there is a uh, ace, for instance, for this one, in your life area, at the top of your life, you get to play it. And your leader gains 2k until the end of your opponent's turn. This ace can get into a five cost ace that has rush if you have two or less life, which most likely you will be. This Sabo can go into the older Sabo, the five cost that can draw you two and protect your cards, which is just cra crazy, just broken. It also has a five cost Sabo that you can pop a five cost, which is cool, I guess. And of course this Luffy can go into the five cost Luffy. It's a 6K that can turn into 8K. And then basically you get a draw out of it. Knowing all of this, basically what happens throughout the game is that you're gonna be using the leader effect while you're at zero, put these five cost cards uh, from your trash and as well as from your hand into your life face up. And then you use these 2K cards or two cost cards in order to boost up your leader into a 2K uh, which becomes a 7k or a 9k, which I guess the cap would be 11, but most of the time you won't even be able to do that. But it is nice to be a 9k leader until the end of your opponent's turn. This is where, when I was talking about being a roller coaster, where one, it is pretty awesome to be a 7k or 9k leader pretty consistently. However, um, in order to be consistent, you have to find these combo of cards. When you talk about black and as well as yellow decks, they kind of just are it, right? Uh, the, the yellow decks basically have their life to kind of do its own thing and autopilot and black just sort of has everything laid out for e each other, right? Like think of uh, Sakazuki or Gekimoria, right? This deck is completely different. You need all of the cards in order to agree with each other from your hand to your, your trash to your life, etc. And this becomes very complex, not only in the place where you can make misplays, but also the fact that you're going to be at zero or or two or one life almost all the time. So you really do play into becoming a 7k leader, a 9k leader, etc. Those are basically the goals of this deck. Knowing all that and basically the goal of the deck, let's talk about pros and cons and my first impressions about the deck. The first pro is that you can be pretty aggressive. Uh, honestly, you are able to get the 6k bodies on board. You have Sabo that basically loops itself if you do it correctly. All the 5k bodies that are swinging at you, even 6k's, are going to have a tough time when you're a 7k or a 9k leader. And honestly, I haven't have had this much fun playing a deck in a long while. Like I said before, it does have dedicated searchers and it does have good support in the yellow color. Now, the cons kind of make or break this, I, I would say. Well, one, it like playing with your life at zero is scary. One, uh, I mean, sure, you're going to have the ability to put things back into your life, but those don't get back to your hand. Those are non, uh, usually non counterable cards where you can't use them to counter. They're not going to your hand, obviously. So you're going to be taking one life and basically be playing at zero by the time you get there. So if they have more than like four or five attacks on board, which sometimes it does happen, the go wide decks can kind of hurt you quite a lot if they have the numbers for it. Misplaying is very, very easy in this deck. It is very complex, in my opinion, comparative to any other deck that I've played in One Piece. So one mistake can pretty much cost you the game. And finally, your 2Ks are all very good. 
uh, and they pretty much need to be played in order to be consistent. And if you don't use your 2Ks, one, you're gonna be using them as counter and you really can't get them back most of the time, even with the eight drop Gekko Mori we're gonna be talking about it in the future, but just in general, it, uh, it needs to be played in order to be consistent, which means you're losing those 2Ks out of hand. Speaking of, let's talk about those 2Ks real quick. First up, we have Charlotte Flampy. I don't know how to say her name, but if anything, she is a one cost on play. You take the uh, top card or bottom card of your life and then you draw one card. This is a really good opener because I think Honestly, you kind of just want to be at zero. So you're going to be taking all the life in the world and uh, it, it just feels good to draw one uh, while you do that. Plus it basically gives you more options to thin out your deck and as well as your life and be able to use all your cards in general. Then we have Kozuki uh, Hirori. And basically we've seen this card before in the previous sets or this previous set, I should say. And uh, the two costs on play, you get to uh, do the same thing as Charlotte but you get to place one uh, of your cards in hand on the top of your life pile. And basically this is super, super important early in the game because you can't do it like, so here's the thing, you can't complete the on play effect if your life is faced up. So that means you have to uh, do this when your life is faced down. Uh, so this is super important early in the game uh, in order to set up your two cost and as well as just in general. Then we have Makino, which uh, basically does the same thing as the other two. You get to add the top or bottom card into your uh, hand from your life, and then you get to rearrange your life cards, the remaining ones from there. So this is also a good opener, which basically means you just have the, uh, the, the two cost on the board after this, and usually it's good while you have uh, Dawn open in order to do that. Those are mainly the two Ks, but there are two searchers that you should know about. One is going to be the Monkey D Garp, looks at the top five and gets a uh, Sabo Ace or uh, Monkey D Luffy, like also five or less and put it to your hand. And uh, this basically adds all of the two Ks or the two costs and then all of the five cost targets from that. Uh, and, and honestly, this is a good one because it is a 2K uh, swing. The other one is basically the same thing. It's a one cost event card, the Three Brothers Bond. And uh, I mean, it's cool uh, that you get the trigger effect, um, this is the only one that I, I might be reducing or cutting because it is nice to get all of the, the consistent searchers, but I don't know, just having the the event cards in hand when you kind of need literally anything else um, is tough. But I, I, I will say that you kind of, like I said, you need the consistency in, in this deck in order to search literally everything, all the two costs and all the five costs. Uh, so I, I don't fault it at all. Now let's lastly talk about the last remaining support that I put in this deck. It's gonna be, of course, the Gecko Moria. So basically the plan is to get to 10 Dawn, uh, be able to put two while you're under, well, you're at zero life, basically, um, under your leader, uh, place two of the five costs uh, from the trash into your life, and then play the two costs that you may have countered with, or they may have removed, whatever it may be, um, uh, using the Gecko Moria effect. So effectively, you just get two of them, uh, you put two of the targets for those for those two cards uh, that you bring back with Gecko Moria, and then you get to become a, a nine or seven K leader from there. Sometimes you don't really want that because you can still use uh, Makino, for instance, like if you're at one life and they, they know how to play against the deck, which apparently a lot of people do on the sim, uh, uh, they can uh, leave you at one and you have, you're forced to use literally any of the two Ks that I just mentioned in order to get down to zero life and then use the, the leader effect. And in order to do that, you can basically use one of the targets with Gecko Moria, with uh, Hirori or Makino or whatever, and then um, force your life to go down to zero. Use the two remaining Dawn from the 10, use your leader effect, and then uh, the other target would be a two cost that's applicable for that. So that way you can use uh, the top card instead of the bottom card. The bottom card could be literally anything. And then you can uh, use a 2K to get to 7K, have a one life for the following turn, etc. This usually is pretty good against like Sakazuki, for instance, or whatever, if you get a Sabo and then um, uh, put the five cost Sabo that draws you two, discards one, etc. Uh, and then protect your your body. So I think that's pretty good. I think that is a, a pretty good combo. 
Now the other two support cards that I did put this put it in this deck is going to be Gadatsu as well as Charlotte Katakori, the four drop. And the reason why I put these two is one, a lot of other, like for instance, I don't run the five cost uh, Sawbell, the one that comes in the starter deck in this deck. I, I replace that with Gadatsu because one, it doesn't really have that much removal. The Sawbell that is in the starter deck is very conditional while Gadatsu is too. It does slow yourself down for being too, um, too crazy in the early game so if you put this on five going first then you can pop something and then you can have this as an applicable target with counter power from your trash so if you just need something that you don't really care about that's going to go back to the bottom of the deck after they hit, they hit you then gadatsu is going to be a really good target for that the other part of that is that uh, charlotte katakuri also allows you to do that while being aggressive it's another 6k swing in order to uh look at the top life uh put it at the bottom or or or, or top or leave it there so that way a two cost from the following turn will be able to do that. You can play it off Gekko Moria. So if you want to play this along with the two cost, then that's perfectly fine too. And um, it's worked pretty well. Like both of these guys have been great in the testing. Um, and uh, that's only saying so far because uh, I, th I think I'm terrible with this deck. I, I won't let you know right now, uh, but I will teach you what I've learned and as well as uh, the, the guidance that I did see and the things that I didn't, you know, didn't want you to to go about for bad habits. Anyway, here is the deck list that I have been personally testing out. Uh, it has been an absolute blast uh, playing this. It it really does test your ability as a combo deck tester. And I personally love the deck. I, I, I think it's great. Um, I don't think it's gonna be uh, supremely talked about and it may see some competitive play when it comes to North America. However, it does take a very good pilot. It does take someone who knows the deck in and out. And honestly, uh, you gotta find the ratios that work for you, just like any other deck, but this one especially. Either way, usually I do a turn by turn, but I'm just gonna give some gameplay. So let's take a look at a couple games now. All right, we're gonna start out with something a little different. It's gonna be the yellow purple crocodile. and. It's interesting because EB01 actually gives quite a lot for uh, Crocodile, if I'm not mistaken. Or maybe I'm thinking about Opal 7. I'm pretty sure it's EB01. Either way, it's, uh, it's a good testament to show a few things. One, we kind of opened a bunch of stuff that we don't really need. Kadatsu is pretty cool, but most of the things that are going to be playing are going to be late game. Uh, so it's not really going to be too useful. But it is going to be nice to have some counter power that we don't really care about and as well as an attacker that we did go ahead and use and then pop their own uh, Kozuki. So uh, we are just gonna take some of these uh, swings. We do have our own in uh, hand as well. So we have a couple of choices. We can use Makino or Kozuki, or Kozuki in order to uh, go down to zero life and then pitch the two cards that we have in hand and then play out Sabo and or Monkey D. Luffy. So instead, we're just going to go ahead and do the other side of that, which is just use all of our uh, Dawn in order to do pretty much all the stuff that I was talking about anyway. We decided to swing with the Gadatsu into the uh, Missile Sunday and proceeded to get blocked, uh, which they get a free block because it gets that plus 1,000 on that block minus one Dawn. And uh, did save me with the Elthor, which is annoyingly useful here since i'm going to be at two or less life pretty much all the time uh seven drop linlin is super ineffective in this deck by the way uh <laughs> i could have played both of them here obviously since uh we were we have the ace on top and the sawa on the bottom but we just trash it and just are able to play uh, anything else afterwards. So we Sabo protect everything that we have um, so far and then uh, uh, filter through our hand and be a 9k leader, which is pretty dang cool. Then we proceed to swing with Kodatsu for seven and then another seven for Sabo. And the reason why I did this is because um, basically with only three attackers, he either has to take the life, uh, ditch two cards or just end up doing this where he blocks and gets the um, uh, the counter out to get out of it. But because we're a 12k leader with the two done, 4k plus another, uh, we are good to go just to swing into it. So basically we're not losing. Um, he would have to commit a lot of Dawn to do any kind of damage. And if he does swing here, we just Sabo. And the cool thing about that is that when we do block, it goes straight to the drop or the trash. And we're just able to... Um, 
uh, do what we need to do after to get it right back by playing um, a Kothka Gamoria or another Sabo 2 drop and um, a leader effect. But the awkward thing about here is that we did use the Curly Dadon. And the reason why I did the Dadon is because I thought he was just going to swing at my life. But because I swung at the Sabo, we basically uh, opened it up for them to keep swinging. But here we're just swinging out. We have a lot of 6k, 7k, etc. kind of swings. And from here, we're just swinging 7-7. Seven, seven. Don't really care about the blockers anymore because they have it. They are, they are zero life now. There's no point. And now they disconnect. So if anything, uh, that's a good representation, I would say, of just like a standard, um, standard turn, whatever that you want to call it, uh, with Luffy. Not really too much going on, but at least you can kind of understand where the two drops and the five drops and etc. are coming in and how they work. All right, next up is going to be against uh, Gekko Moria. So we did go ahead and Mulligan, which didn't really get too many better cards, to be honest. And uh, there's a couple things about this one. When you do want to Mulligan, you want to get more things that can manipulate your life than others, because there are searchers through uh, Garp in as well as the uh, one cost event card. And honestly, you know, this hand is not too bad. Uh, we do get the two categories, which we can kind of play back to back if we really wanted to. We do have the ace, which after these attacks and as well as them removing what we need to, what will we have on field with the Absalon, etc. Um, it, it kind of works out and they're going to continue to do that. That's why this, this matchup matchup is a little difficult when you really think about it, right? It, it, uh, it just, it, it kind of gets a little out of hand with all the 5k bodies that they have. And you're really forced to continue to play the two drops so that way you have um, more and more defense as a 7k or 9k leader and as well as uh, the sabos because they just end up protecting any of the things that you have on board obviously right um this is where also where like uh borsalino can come in um but what we did here is be a little um a little a little crazy with it where we're going to be a 9k leader with zero life which is fine for the most part they don't really have too many big boys uh the a drop or whatever um that can really protect them uh or take game i should say so, uh, for us not to protect ourselves is what i'm kind of trying to get at um so the only thing that has, hasn't been sawboat is the, the five drop that we uh just played which is fine because if they kale it which is the bright side with this matchup versus like sakazuki um they just go to the trash. So what we can do is uh, either try to take game here or try to block her up again, uh, which we have Sabos in hand. We have Gekamoria, and I'm just trying to do the math here if we want to do a Gekamoria play or not. I actually do decide to play the Gekamoria. So uh, again, a couple choices. We could play the category if we really wanted to, but I think what we wanted to do here is just to block her up with Sabo and as well as uh, just keep the other Sabo on board too. And I was deciding if I want to go ahead and try to pick and, pick and prod uh, with this 7k swing, which I end up doing. And I could have took him down a zero here, but honestly, you know, our Gekko Moria is uh, protected. And uh, I mean, I, I think we're going to be able to take game next turn. Um, I highly doubt they're going to go for our face. So I, I think we're okay. Um, and if they do, we have two blockers and as well as all this counter power in hand. And there's some merit to playing or keeping the Gecko Moria last turn because it's just so much Dawn commitment for them to try to take game. And I am just trying to uh, figure out what I want to do here. And to be honest, I kind of misplayed because I thought I had an ace uh, in hand, right? I, I thought I had an ace in hand, but I don't. I actually had a Monkey D. Luffy and a Sabo. And uh, the only way to get it back was to get it with Gecko Moria instead. Now, here's the thing. I actually went and swung eight to his Sabo, basically just saying, hey, you want to block or not? And because he did this and not countered out, because if you wanted to, the, my thought process is that if he um, could counter out, which I'll pause here, um, if he could counter out, then he would have done that. So that way he can keep the Sabo for next game or next turn to take for game, right? And it's a little risky for, for me to to put him on not having two 2Ks instead. He had one 2K and, and, the, and one K after that. So him not getting out of the 8K swing and blocking with the Sabo meant he didn't have uh, two 2Ks. That's, that was what I was trying to, 
to, to put myself on or put him on. Um, and I think I probably would have been fine next turn. Uh, we would have blocked the Gekamoria swing. There would have been at least one, two, three, four, five, uh, seven K swings, possibly nines there too. So, I mean, I think we could have got out of it for sure. Got another blocker, one life, and then a bunch of cards in hand to protect ourselves. And then we have our Mucky D. Luffy and as well as our Gecko on the crack bag. So there's still, like, if I want to go the safe route, I think I would have been fine. But just for the content, I did swing with the the Sabos to find out. So um, <laughs> Gekamori is pretty difficult. I think Sakazuki is harder. Some people might... Um, disagree with me but most matchups really just depend on how you draw and what you do with those draws um because sometimes it's just difficult to kind of pull out of nothing pull out something from nothing basically but let me know what you think about started started deck 13 ultra deck what do you want to call it luffy and i plan to do probably at least one of the other brothers sabo or ace most likely ace i've been playing sabo and he's okay um might not be my play style maybe that's why if anything, let me know in the comments, subscribe if you're new, let me know what you want to see next. I'll see you in the next one.